John Turnbull Thompson, the surveyor from the Scottish borders who left an indelible impression on the southern New Zealand landscape. John Turnbull Thompson was born here at Glororum Farmhouse near Bamburgh in 1821. The unusual Latin name comes from an incident in the 12th century when King William II unsuccessfully tried to besiege nearby Bamburgh Castle. Peaked at his failure, he then had a high wooden tower erected here so that he could glower over or Glororum, his enemy's stronghold. Names were to be important for Thompson and perhaps his greatest contribution to Otago are all those he applied to its landscapes during his stint as provincial surveyor. Many of them came from this part of the borders, including the names of his two grandfathers' houses here in Berwickshire, Earnslaw and Abbey St Bathins, respectively. Thompson lived for a time in both places after his father died when he was a boy. This meant that his early life straddled the border between England and Scotland. He began his schooling, for instance, at Wooler near his home on the English side, but then went to Dunn's Academy and Marischal College in Aberdeen before finishing his training as an engineer at Newcastle on Tyne. At 17 and newly graduated, Thompson got a contract to undertake surveys at Penang in modern day Malaysia, fulfilling a boyhood dream to travel to the east where one of his older relatives had long served in the army. He spent three tough years working in the Malay jungle before his excellent maps caught the eye of the governor of nearby Singapore. Despite his youth, Thompson was appointed government surveyor and engineer there. Over the next 12 years, he mapped and surveyed and oversaw the construction of roads, bridges, and the famous Horsburgh Lighthouse that still guards the eastern entrance to the Straits of Singapore. But the harsh conditions of its exposed site over the two year construction period absolutely wrecked Thompson's health and in 1853 he was invalided home here to Britain. Once he had recovered he was advised to seek work in somewhere with a more temperate climate and he chose New Zealand, arriving in Auckland in early 1856. Thompson's reputation had preceded him, so had one of his brothers. Visiting him in Dunedin he was courted by the provincial authorities to lead the provincial survey staff. He turned down their offer at first, but when it was renewed a few months later in Auckland, he accepted, becoming the Otago Provincial Surveyor at a salary of 300 pounds per year. It proved to be a critical appointment. Dunedin in 1856 was in a terrible condition with absolutely basic infrastructure or lack of it, especially roads and bridges wherever you looked. In fact, pretty much nothing had been done since the collapse of the New Zealand Company six years earlier. It's primitive condition evident in this view, painted by Thompson himself soon after his arrival. It was, he later wrote, but a hamlet, a ludicrous parody on its great mother of Edinburgh, sunk in poverty and filth that had earned the more appropriate title of Mud Eden. His job would be to set things to rights. Then there was the surveying of the province itself, huge tracts of which remained unmapped. And if they were unmapped, they couldn't be sold or developed. There followed two years of marathon survey expeditions by Thompson and his small staff. Vast sweeps on horseback that took him as far north as Auraki Mount Cook and as far west as the Waio River, often in appalling conditions. The survey maps that followed were masterly pieces of work. But perhaps more important long term were the many names that Thompson bestowed on features of the landscape. Much of the nomenclature of the Otago province owes its origin to this grand surveying effort. Many of them reflect his family's origins in the Scottish borders. Dunstan, Earnslaw, Earnsclue, Hawknan, Lauda, Lindis, Nenthorn and Roxburgh among them. He also preserved as many Maori names as he could find. Thompson's time in Dunedin saw him marry in 1858 Jane Williamson, a pioneer settler from the Philip Lang. 
they were to have nine daughters. The Thompsons settled on 20 acres here on the hillside above Caversham and built Rocky Side. Their presence remembered by the names of two streets, Thompson and Rocky Side. Thompson led a busy life, working hard obviously, but also devoting time to his passion for painting, for scientific research and to writing. He wrote a number of books and was a founding member of both the Otago Institute and the New Zealand Institute. In 1876, he was appointed first Surveyor General of New Zealand and moved to Wellington. Recognition for the quality of his Otago surveys, which became the model of a national survey system. He retired three years later, moving to Invercargill, a town that he had laid out in one of his earlier surveys. There he built a large house to his own design, but modelled on the farmhouse at Glororum. He's remembered today with the naming of streets, buildings and parks all around the city. The Thompson family's former house, Lenil, is today proudly maintained by the Finlayson family in Invercargill. Thompson died at his home, Lenil, in 1884, aged just 64 of a stroke. He's remembered today as one of the most hardy and adventurous civil servants of pioneer New Zealand.